So hello everyone, my name is Jean Chen. I will be the host for today's session. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in to uh, today's uh, session on translating your talent virtually with online content. Our roundtable discussion today will be one hour long. If this is your very first time, we'd like to give you a very warm round welcome into the Emergence family. And um, we know that you can be anywhere, but you've chosen to spend the next hour with us. And we are super excited to see familiar faces. Um, so we would like to begin by acknowledging uh, that today's session comes to you from the unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples, including the traditional territories of the Musqueam, uh, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. We'd like to acknowledge the generous support of Creative BC and the province of British Columbia, City of Vancouver, and our host organization, Red Chamber Cultural Society. I would like to start by introducing our very amazing uh, panel today. And I will start off with Crystal Dos Santos. She is a two times Western Canadian Music Award winning soul, jazz, and RB singer based out of Vancouver, Canada. With an extraordinary voice that is commanding, powerful, and rich with talent, her music inspired by classic and neo soul combined with smooth RB elements in executing, is executed brilliantly and it's simultaneously elegant, bold, and sensual, similar to modern legend Sharon Jones and Charles Bradley. And I would like to introduce Catherine Penfold. She is a recording artist, songwriter, and video producer based out of Vancouver, BC. Having begun her career as a touring uh, Celtic artist at the age of 14, as well as being side a woman to her father as he ran his internationally renowned video company until she was 18, she has truly lived a life surrounded by the arts. Catherine is the co-founder of Sandstone, a studio focused on video production and digital promotion for musicians. Finally, we have Dr. Deirdre Morgan. Uh, she is a professor of music at Vancouver Community College. She is a scholar and performer of the Jews harp, an ancient mouth uh, resonated musical instrument found in many cultures around the world. Deirdre has studied the instrument since 2005, speaking, performing, and conducting award-winning research in over a dozen countries. Amazing people, please welcome our panelists today. So we're going to start out. Um, this is a uh, what we call an express session. So our our classic sessions are two hours long. This is an express session, which is just one hour together today. Um, so we'll start with Crystal, then Catherine, then myself, each talking for a few minutes about today's topic. And uh, then the last half hour, we will just open it up to your questions and just sort of an open discussion. Any anything you want to know or pick our brains about. So I will hand it over to Crystal, lob the ball. Thank you, thanks Deirdre. Uh, good morning, everyone. How are you all? Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. <laughs> Let me tell you, my schedule has been a little crazy these days. So uh, do as I say, not as I do in this session. I have not been keeping up with my social media as I could, but um, I'm really excited about this topic because I feel like uh, nowadays, people get to know you online a lot more so than they ever will meet you in person. So it is such an extension of yourself and it's a controlled extension of yourself. You get to put exactly what you want out there. And I think um, this is such a wonderful topic because we talked a little bit in our personal boundaries um, session about how much you want to put out there and, and how you have the choice to um, really sort of curate and design exactly who it is that you want to be online. So I think a couple of the things we can touch upon and talk about are, you know, content, like what, what do I post? What am I supposed to say? You know, it's not always like, I, I love the old, I don't know if this is an old thing, but like, you know, I love the old, what am I having for breakfast? Like, I feel like that used to be the thing that people would post on Instagram, but um, 
I had a friend once who really, when I was having this question, um, said, you know, pick four things that are you. And they don't have to be like the personal internal you. They can just be four things that you excel in. Heck, they can be two, but like four is a good number. It's a nice round number. And what you would do is basically rotate those things. Say you want to talk about your kids one day, and then you want to talk about what you cooked that day. And then you want to say, oh, here's some music. And then you want to maybe engage in a different way. So there's obviously nowadays, there's so much formula to what it is. And I think, you know, before you, you know, shove your stuff down someone's throat, you want to offer them something or engage with them in another way. And I think that's one of the most captivating things that I've found about social media that I'm attracted to is that personal element that really sort of, you know, gives you a little bit of someone's personality. Maybe you throw a joke in there or a quip or whatever, or your caption is hilarious. Um, or another thing that I love about social media is sharing. And uh, unfortunately, I'm only a resharer these days, but um, you know, when you can share someone else's stuff and really celebrate your community, that's also another way to really beautifully extend and you know, um, celebrate and, and lift up the rest of the community. And Catherine is actually really wonderful at that. And so on that note, I'll pass it off to Catherine because you're a rock star. Get it, girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much for having me. Um, this is I've been hearing about these sessions and been watching you guys do your thing. And it's just it's a great honor to be able to be here chatting about some of my favorite stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, I started out. I've been a musician for um, a very long time. And then uh, I got to walk along beside my dad, um, creating in his video production company and kind of learned that was my degree um, in we traveled around the world. I was his first just got to hold the like battery pack for his camera because back then cameras were like, and uh and then uh, you know came up through the ranks got to edit for him when i was like 12 I just so i have truly been like immersed in in post production and um now running this studio with my business partner matt reed here in vancouver and it is it's all dedicated to um music the arts um being able to um we're we're mainly on instagram and youtube it's called we are sandstone on instagram and we're um we're trying to share education from artists we're trying to share um new emerging and kind of mid career artists who are really um thank you deirdre um trying to who are movers and shakers and have this um uh, not a plan, but just in the exact same way that Crystal said, you have your things that you want to focus on. And when we watch the artists coming through the studio, it's clear to us that these people are coming through with a dedication to their career and they've, they've put some thought or they're ready to put some thought into how to share um, content for their career. And that is where the juicy stuff happens for me because I get so excited about that, being able to create just even from one shoot, um, being able to create a behind the scenes video and a time lapse and all this stuff. And the incredible thing is here is that sometimes we're shooting on our iPhones. You know, sometimes we're shooting on these new fangled iPads. Um, oh, excuse my dog behind me. Um, you know, there's all of these incredible ways that we can create using the toolbox around us. Even just like right now, the microphone on this laptop that I'm using right now is insane. And I've recorded some stuff into Logic just using this microphone. And the beautiful thing is, is that in this day and age, nobody questions really where your video is coming from or where your audio is coming from. Maybe, yes, you wanna make a full length album that's like, and all of this video content that um, is going to be shared on a larger platform, then you have to think about how big the video is, how big the audio is, and how the quality of that. But 
it really, it's such a freeing time that if you can kind of just put on the MacGyver hat for a second and think about how to duct tape together some things and oh my goodness, so many of my tripods have been hung from a ceiling in a really weird way. The other last studio thing, I had a gimbal that was sideways with a light coming off of it, coming from my ceiling, like just do it. I think that's the biggest thing that I wanna say here today is that social media, it's overwhelming it's sometimes it's really hard to share our art or such a vulnerable thing that comes from within us um that's that in itself needs to have a pause and a beautiful moment of awareness of like how huge it is this is such a it's a different time with social media that we're just meant to like put it out there back in the day when there wasn't social media this was like a beautiful moment with reverence and just like, look at what I made, you know, and then, but now with social media, we're just putting it out there. And so still have that, you know, you're putting that baby out there, like, whoo, that's a big deal. Any piece of content you make, it's a big deal putting it out there. And so it's okay to feel nervous about it. At the same time, don't let yourself get wrapped up in the details of how you're making the thing. Have fun with it. And, and sometimes push the go button before you think you're ready. I think that's the biggest one that, I, uh, that I've been learning lately. It's so much easier to share stuff as sandstone because it's not me, <laughs> you know, it's not my face. But from sharing every single day through sandstone, that has really been teaching me a lot about, you know what, I can, I can put myself out there. I can make things with just the creative little bits and pieces I have around me, a friend's GoPro strapped to this thing onto my scooter kind of to make a music video. If you have a cool idea, run with it and have fun. That is what this is all about. Yay, thank you so much, Catherine and Crystal. Um, I'm third on the list, so I will add my little tidbits. Uh, so I teach in the music department at Vancouver Community College, and I teach a course there called Social Media for Self-Employed Musicians. And those last three parts are, those the last three words are important because my course is really directed at early career musicians, so people who are in the second year of the music diploma. Um, take that class and everyone in that class, most people in that class usually feel like they're not ready to share yet. And the class is all about like, how do you get to yourself to that place where you can actually show yourself, reveal yourself, even as Catherine is saying before you feel like you're ready. Um, and also, how do you become your own marketing manager before you have money? you know, before you've really taken off as an artist, the self-employed musician implies that you are your own publicist at that at that stage in your career. Now, hopefully the goal is eventually you can, work, you know, get, get grants or get income uh, to hire professionals um, so that you can offload that workload from you and you can just focus on being the artist. But the reality is for most artists in capitalism that we have to wear many hats, we have to do a lot of these different jobs ourselves. We have to become, if not experts in marketing, we at least have to become like conversant and semi-fluent uh, in it, limping along. And you know, it is a lot. It's already a lot to be an artist and to be coming up with all of our creative ideas and then seeing those through to fruition. Social media does add a whole other burden to us. Let's just be real. That is a whole other channel that we need to direct our creative energy into. So it's really important to find the balance of keeping some creativity for yourself and for your own projects, but having just enough that you're directing at social media and figuring out what your relationship is going to be with social media. So yes, Jill, the constant flow of content on social media, it's overwhelming. It's overstimulating. At a certain point, we're just numbing out and not even taking it in, in anymore. So how do you be creative when your nervous system is literally just being inundated with content and information constantly? I have a few thoughts on this that I'm going to share with you. Okay, so number one is 
this concept that when I worked in arts administration, uh, one of my mentors taught me this. So I attribute this to Yana Crown, who was the former general manager of Musica Intima, which is a mixed voice a cappella choir in Vancouver. Um, we, I was the marketing coordinator for Musica Intima, and uh, we did this thing called espionage. So we would always, always be looking at what the equivalent groups to us in the city and even outside the city were doing. So we would subscribe to all their mailing lists. We would get like get print copies of their print brochure. I don't know if anybody still does print brochure <laughs> since COVID now, but anyway, definitely subscribe to the e-newsletter, follow all the social media channels, and you literally spy on them. You find the artists who are similar doing what to, to what you do and just watch them and look and look who is the marketing person they're using with who are they collaborating with do i like their photos do i not like their photos do i like their branding do i not like their branding so espionage we actually had at musica intima we had a folder like a paper folder in our filing cabinet that said espionage and we would just put other groups brochures in them and we would have meetings and we would put them all out on the table and we'd look at them so the online version of that is um, I have a little exercise that I do with my class, which is think about the artists and especially the musicians that you follow on social media that you're already following. Have a look at some of their stuff. Choose one of your favorite accounts and try to explain to yourself, what do you like about this account? What specifically about this account is engaging to you? Is it the look? Is it the types of content? Is it the variety? Is it the schedule of how they don't always post the same type of content three days in a row? Is it how they mix it up? Um, what are the elements that you admire? And you can choose a really famous person. You can be like, I love Beyonce's social media. Like, obviously you're not at Beyonce's level, but there's something that we can learn from every single person so it's good to look at somebody who is kind of on your level somebody who's a bit above you where you're kind of aspiring to get to maybe in the next couple of years and then yeah look at somebody in the stratosphere look at ariana grande like look at somebody major 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 and just be like what's working for them and is there a version of that that i can diy and make my own um, so to that end, I want to just give you a couple of book references that I work with in my class and that I find really inspiring. So Austin Cleon has a book called Steal Like an Artist, and it's really, really cute. Crystal, you know it? It's super cute. Um, I'm not like, I'm not in league with him or anything. I'm not like promoting his book. But I, I think the book is really wonderful. And um, there's also, he did a TED talk on it a few years ago. So I'll just put the link in the chat. So he, his, his thing is basically like all artists steal from each other and it's not, it's not actually a bad thing. But his definition of steal really is take inspiration from. So his whole thing is you can't, you're not copying. It's not about copying. It's about looking at what others are doing, being aware of what others are doing, but then figuring out what resonates with you and what inspires with what inspires you and then going with that. So um, I love to do espionage. And then the next step, step two of, of this process is to come up with something called an ideas bank. So an ideas bank is really, really helpful when you're a self-employed musician, but it's also something that's really helpful when you get to the point where you have enough resources to maybe hire a professional to help you with your image and help you with your marketing. So an ideas bank is essentially just doing espionage and making a lot of notes. And I really like to suggest doing this with a buddy. So if you have another artist friend, maybe it's somebody you met through emergence or that you're always seeing at the emergence sessions, like reach out and be like, hey, do you wanna make an ideas bank together? I get my students to do it in pairs and it's the, we come up with this whole Google doc of all of their social media ideas um, that they have gleaned from spying on other people's social media accounts and making lists of the types of posts they're seeing. Um, do that process. And then when you have the ideas bank, you'll never have that problem of waking up in the morning and being like, oh God, I have to post something and I have no ideas and I have no energy and I have no creativity for this right now. You can look at your ideas bank and be like, oh, there's an idea. Okay, cool. You can also, when you've got the ideas bank generated, that's where you can get into pre-scheduling 
posts, content calendars, looking at your month, seeing do I have anything, any releases or anything that's going to be newsworthy or just shareable in the next month, and then building different types of content around it before it, leading up to it, promoting it, and then after it. So there's there's lots of tricks and I know it's very overwhelming and it feels like, oh, I have to get this whole new skill set that I, I didn't really sign up for when I just wanted to make music, right? Because this is a very, very different skill set. Um, but it is, it is all about getting, finding your audience, building your audience organically. This is the way to do it organically. And the organic building is slower than just going and buying a bunch of followers, right? It's, it's, it's slower and more painstaking than just paying to have bots uh, make it look like you are successful on social media. You can do that too, but there is nothing that has the value quite like an organic audience online. So, and it, it will take years. It will take years and consistency is key and it's hard and it's overwhelming and I'm totally with you and I get overwhelmed myself by it all the time, all the time. But these are some of the hacks that I've come up with and especially the buddy system I love because then it's not all on you. And that to me is one of the things that I find social media ironically quite isolating. I feel like all this tremendous pressure on me as an individual to be this idea, constant font of ideas and genius marketing ideas. And a lot of the time I'm just tired and I don't have that. So if you can team up with somebody where you can share ideas and be like, hey, do you want to try this? Or I'll try this on my account. You try this on your account. And then let's compare notes. How did that post go? Did, am I happy with the results of that post? How did I feel about that post? Was I comfortable doing that kind of sharing? Or am I more comfortable with this kind of sharing? Like bring your community in to help you with this. It takes a village to run a social media account. So I will leave it there for now. Um, obviously there's a lot more to say on this topic, but let's open it up to, to questions and I will mute myself and have a read of what you guys have said in the chat as well. I'm just gonna talk to um, Darcy's question here. Um, color palette and brand. Um, this is something that, um, has constantly frustrated me as an artist. And then as a video producer, of course, I've got editing programs that I can put through color grading and it's still incredibly hard because it's actually a really intimate thing for each of you to come to, um, to decide what your color palette is, to decide what your, what, what is you visually in, and especially it's again, just like how Deirdre was saying, she's like, oh, now we have to also be this and this and this. Oh, guess what? We get to now be a marketing publicist who gets to decide what our branding should look like, you know? And this stuff can be uh, really overwhelming, but as an artist without my big computers, um, there have been two really amazing apps that I use. Um, one is, I uh, should have unlocked my phone before that point, probably. Snapseed is great for photos if you want to do any kind of little spot healing or anything like that. Um, and I use it as well. There's a really lovely little ambient slide and it makes you, it's, I'm not great with apps that really change what the photo looks like. You kind of want to, especially when I look at the artists that I want to look like, um, the aspiring people that I look like, uh, look at on Instagram. Um, I notice that their photos don't have a ton of filtering, but somehow they still all match. But it's because they have someone following them around with a Canon 90D or something, and they all beautiful, you know. So with our iPhones, we have Snapseed and we have VSCO is the other one. And VSCO now allows you to edit video in it and color grade video. And if any of you guys have used it, you'll know that there's hundreds of filters across the board for VSCO. But the wonderful thing, um, yes, Canva, awesome. Um, a really wonderful thing about uh, VSCO is that you can create your own preset 
And that's where things get so much simpler. It takes a little bit of an investment at the beginning of like, okay, I like a little bit of like a fog over my photos to make them look a little bit more vintage or your videos. I want to, I really like it when the colors are desaturated. You can go through all of those filters, choose one, turn them at a like, um, what kind of opacity so you can have them at a hundred percent so it's a super vivid using that filter you can bring it back to 50 percent so it's only using a bit of it and then you can save that as a preset so then anytime you're taking video or photo you take it into vseo and you use that preset and that has saved me so much time um over the years and the yeah lightroom mobile is really great um the the one thing I want to add is um, if you're anything like me when it comes to digital content, I have like a week where my brain is really on it and moving and I'm thinking of all these cool ideas. And it's it's an interesting thing that I tell um, I tell a lot of clients that are making weekly content to just choose a day. Um, and that sometimes doesn't work. We have some people that rent our studio, they come in and they start filming and then they leave in 10 minutes. And they're just like, I just couldn't do it today. And I'm like, I get it. Um, and so in those folders of all of the inspiration and stuff, also have a folder for when inspiration hits. And don't, don't worry too much about the fact that you're coming up with a whole bunch of content at a time. Start saving it. Start stockpiling it for a rainy day. And also you might find that later when you come back to that folder and you see something, you're like, oh, actually I'm gonna build on that idea because that was cool, but now I've got something else to do. So don't ever be worried about, oh, I've got so many ideas, but I've already put a post out today. Start putting them away for a rainy day. And that's gonna help you also with using, um, I use Later app for all of our scheduling, but there's also Planoli. Oh, there's so many Hootsuite. Um, you can start loading it in there on a free account and and you can start moving it around, seeing how you like the layout of it. Another uh, little color grading um, thing that I do is sometimes there's a photo or video that just doesn't fit in. It's like too grainy. Someone else has sent it to you or make it black and white. There's just there's something that is so easy <laughs> about looking at someone's profile and you've got all of their really amazing um, matching aesthetic and then a black and white photo dispersed in there, I find really pleasing to the eye. So if there's a photo that you love, but you're like, gosh, I just can't get it to fit in. I have shared them and deleted them so many times because I get it up there. I'm like, no still doesn't work make it black and white and sometimes that totally fixes it and you've got ample amount of footage then or photos that you can be uh sharing um i just saw that something else came in um personal videos yeah um yeah behind the scenes videos that is incredible to be able to show people stuff um when i was uh recording my album all of this last year um the i filmed myself writing every song i just had this old old iphone that i had set up for every single um writing session i did every morning and it was a ton of footage that i will never probably use but there are tidbits in there that i'm now able to share a year later that have been super cool and fun to di digest for people who are now hearing the final track and had no idea that it started out as some ballad and totally obscure. Um, but yeah, I'm going to uh, I'm going to pass this over to someone else before continuing on. So to go to some of the other questions, all this information is fantastic. I'm learning so much. I love to always just I, I absorb so much when I'm in these sessions um, for myself greedily and selfishly. Um, and so, you know, anything that I can sort of reciprocate or, or kind of digest and throw back is always amazing. But um, Jill saying that um, she usually put, I usually use TikTok to put bits together and there are more apps that do the same thing. Jill was also asking about um, how do you, how does one 
gain momentum when you're releasing a single? Um, you know, how do you figure out what content to do when you have this one thing, but you want to do it for a prolonged period of time? Sometimes it's hard to think up brand new, fresh ideas for like, hey, we've got a new single. Hey, we're going to release the single. Hey, come listen to our single. Um, I think that they're, again, as Deirdre mentioned, um, I always want to call you Dr. Deirdre. <laughs> you got some of my mentioned. students call me Dr. Disco, so it's okay. Yes, as Dr. Disco mentioned, um, <laughs> uh, I think that like getting a partner and also looking at other people's content around a single because everybody's releasing a single at some point and finding those bits and pieces that really, really like resonate with you. I think what resonates with you yourself is going to help you be more motivated to get your stuff out there. You know, um, I think when we look at someone else's content and it's like, okay, but I don't, I can't wrap my head around that, you know, like, how are you supposed to really you know, jump on board with something like that. But if you can, if you can find content that, that resonates with you, that's probably the kind of content you should be making as well. And um, for example, maybe there's a giveaway, you know, give away a CD, give away a link early to the right person who, I don't know, gets a tribute question about your favorite artist, right? You know, like what's, I don't know, the Rolling Stones first single that blah, 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 right? Like you can engage in those kinds of ways. It creates engagement, it creates community, and then it also sort of awards somebody for being a part of your community, you know, like give, give away a CD, give away a t-shirt if you've made merch, something like that. Give away a ticket to your concert, you know, like these are really lovely engaging moments where you can really build your community and bring people in and it's got to be authentic, you know, like no matter what. I think to me, the core of it all has got to be coming from your heart and not just like this sort of, I don't know, I don't want to call it fake because no matter what you create, it's yours and it's, it's real, but um, it's got to be like a loving, authentic sort of um, offering. And I think that's to me way more attractive and that way I want to be a part of that person's world and that person's you know kind of uh, environment and community um and of course you know using a partner and 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 getting your your buddy for content I think this is genius to me like I'm like I didn't I've never thought about this I think it's so amazing here um because I think that that's basically now your your I hate to call it, but like you're someone's staff and they're your staff in a way, right? Like in a way you're sort of, it's like you've hired someone, but you're also, you're paying for it by being their person. And there's really, I've hired publicists. I've paid the $5,000. I've, you know, worked with publicists on other projects. They're fine. They're good, but it's like a manager. Uh, I've learned along the way that a, a music manager is only going to give you as much as you give you have to basically be your manager first and then somebody else, an agent, a manager and anything. I know this is a different conversation, but they're only going to give what you give, what you have available to give. And so, you know, to go back to these ideas, when you have a bank of ideas, then, you know, when you have, when you know what you want to create and what you want to give, mm -hmm. then, you know, it's endless. Like the, the, the availability for ideas and things is endless, but because ideas can be so hard to come by because we're tired, because we have lives, because we're wearing 2 million hats. I think having that partner, that buddy is just genius. It's so great. I, yeah, I just hate doing things alone. Yeah, <laughs> I, get, I get so, I find it really hard to focus. So it's like the accountability buddy, right? As yes. well. It's like, Hey, do you want to check in once a week about our social media and how it's going? Like, and just fighting back against that Ice, that tremendous isolation, that isolating force of social media. Well, and how many times do you not stop yourself from doing something because you don't have someone else to hold the phone? You don't have the Insta husband, you know? It's just like, here we go, we got Insta friend. <laughs> Honestly, in Insta platonic life partner, yes. <laughs> so I wanted to speak to um, Mandy, your post. Uh, Gary V says, if you're not posting four TikToks a day, you're dead in the water. Blah. that's what I say to that. So FB, IG, Twitter, website, so much time and effort. Yes, yes. So we are one person who maybe now has an accountability 
everybody that they're going to um, proposition after this very meeting. I hope you do. Um, but we're one person and we are one person that has to like still buy their own groceries and do their own laundry. <laughs> like we have really finite resources. Let's be real here. For you have you have to do what's right for you. When you are still running your own social media and your own marketing, um, for me, I would say no more than two platforms. If you can do three platforms, you're like superhuman. Four platforms, to me, that's just out of the question unless you literally have a team. So this is where you wanna do espionage on people and see what other people are doing. However, be realistic that when you are looking at Ariana Grande's photos and her videos and her marketing content, um, be inspired by it, but by the same token, don't use it to beat yourself down with it. Like I'm not there yet and I need to be there. You don't need to be there. She's a millionaire. You're not going to be there. Um, her life comes with its own problems, believe me, right? Like, but just be realistic when you are doing the espionage about what is the level of this artist? What resources do they have? What kind of team do they have? You do not have a team right now, probably. Um, so you have to be really, really careful in managing your energy and in fighting the overwhelm of modern life. Like I feel it all the time. It's really overwhelming to just exist right now um, on a very existential basic level. So do not be, none of us needs the pressure of like, I need to be on TikTok. If you like TikTok, if you spend time on TikTok and you feel called to share on TikTok, it's a great platform. If you are uh, born in the mid 80s like myself and you just can't wrap your head around it because you're an elder millennial and it's slipping away from you, it's fine. Just stick to what you know, which is boomer Facebook and millennial Instagram. You know, it's fine. It's fine to be of your generation because guess what? That's where your audience is too right? Your generational audience is on the same platforms that you actually use and feel comfortable with. So that's fine. That's fine. We have in this process, we have to let some stuff go. We can't be everything to everyone. We cannot be a master of every platform. For me, Twitter is just like, it's, it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. And I do have friends in my generation. They are good at it. They, it, for whatever their, you know, their neurology, the way their brain works, the way their personality is, they like it. So if you like it, I like Instagram because it's pretty pictures. I'm basic. Okay. So you just go with the ones, focus on one or two to really, really put your energy into, and it's not going to be perfect, but yeah, I think we need, there's so much pressure on us. And I think we need to just um, cut some of the unnecessary stuff and just bring our focus in. And there's so much marketing advice out there. And always ask when you're getting marketing advice, who is giving the advice and what resources do they have? Are they on the same level as you? Because if they're up here and they're saying, oh, you should be doing this. It's like, they're not speaking laterally to you. They're speaking hierarchically to you. And that's going to create a pressure situation where you feel not good enough or, or just not enough in general. And we are already feeling that from the constant comparison um, that we are subjected to with being people who are on social media. So what, one more thought that I want to say is that um, you are the world's leading expert on you. There is nobody on the planet who knows more about you than you do. So even if you work with a publicist, even if you work with a manager like Crystal was sharing her experiences with that, the more espionage you've done, the more reflection you've done about where your boundaries and limitations are going to be, what your preferences with social media usage are, even how much time in a day you realistically want to spend on social media and realistically have to spend. What do you actually have to give? Is it half an hour? Is it five minutes? Like you figure out your, your place and then you work with that and you work with that focus. And if you do work with other people, you come to them with that self-knowledge and you go, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm willing to do. These are my preferences. These are the colors I like for my branding. Like the more you do that kind of self-work piece, 
when you do have the resources to work with other people and other professionals, you're going to be that much clearer with them and you're going to get a better result from them. If you go to them and go, hi, make me famous. They're, they don't know you. They don't know. That's a stranger. At best, it's an acquaintance. How is a stranger going to market you better? Like, no. And that is where we have so many artists who are working with teams who haven't done the, all this prep work, all this personal work, and they get buffeted by the winds of publicists and marketing managers making them wear clothes they don't like you know, forcing them into even just collaborations they want don't want to do, forcing them into an image they don't want. And that's because you need to come, and, th and this does go back to that previous session on personal integrity in the business. It, it, your image is actually part of your integrity and you're the expert on it. So people can give you all kinds of advice, like you should wear this dress, you should have this hair, whatever. But at the end of the day, your comfort, your comfort and your safety is everything, basically. And you're the expert on that. I'm going to mute myself. I, I, I want to, that everything, bravo. Yes. Everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Crystal. Um, the, I see Victoria wrote something that's very pertinent to exactly what you're saying here. Um, struggle with the reality that no one cares what you sound like or how you play until they like the way you look. Any tips for reframing this into something joyful? And so, um, I just want to share a little personal bit, if that's okay, um, around this is that um, I've been singing and trying to make it since I was 14. Um, and thanks to all the adults around me saying, oh, g getting to Hollywood is the number one thing. And now I'm 35 and believe me, I feel like I am ancient and there's no way that like I missed that bus like 10 years ago. And yet the thing is is that we are creative beings and age and look and all of that shit doesn't matter and i am not good at this i am just like what crystal says do as i say and not as i do because i'm not good at this and this is a thing that i am struggling with every day but it what matters is your belief in your work your belief in your creativity your belief in like i can't film a video of you without you being able to walk in knowing kind of who you are or just if you aren't at that spot being open to explore what that is and and allowing the people around you to to find that piece of you that you're trying to figure out how to share there's so many moments where i don't feel like i know what that is i feel like the the label that i have sometimes really tries to head me off they're like it'd be great if you were like smoking cigarettes i'm like you're fucking ridiculous go away <laughs> like because i have tattoos i meant to be you know more hard or more this and i really love being in the middle i'm not super feminine i'm not super masculine but i'm not i'm not normal either and that frustrates people who want to just get the job done who don't know who you are gary v thank you very much but the thing that any person watching your feeds listening to your music the number one thing that they're gonna know and and feel is that if you're doing it and you're connected to it you can tell when you go onto someone's social media if they're doing the selfie after selfie after selfie because they think that's the way that they've got to do it and bless them sometimes it, it works and i go onto their feeds and i'm like i need maybe need to learn how to do this because they seem to be rocking it but i think that it's more um my siri just turned on because i said something about siri um I truly believe that the longer haul, vulnerable, integral to yourself feed is always going to win out with your followers and creating that 10,000 super fan folder of people 
that they say that you need to be a musician in this day and age. You need those, you need those super fans that actually want to connect with you. And that comes down to you believing in what it is that you're sharing. And, and when you're okay and you're proud of what you're sharing instead of just doing it because someone else told you you should, or you're on a social media platform because someone said you should, you're not gonna put that across. It's gonna feel like a grind. It's gonna feel like you don't wanna do it every day. And then what's the point at that point? You know, you're meant to find this joyful. You're it's it's. And if it doesn't, then that's the number one thing of like, hey, I haven't found my thing yet then. And there is like, there's so many, this is the beautiful thing is there's so many platforms out there that there we can choose whatever we want and then dedicate yourself to it. I have two little things off of that. Um, if you are someone looking for representation or label down the line from what it is that you're working on, they aren't looking at how many followers we have as the number one thing anymore because people can buy likes uh, or sorry, buy followers. What they're looking at is how many likes that you have or how many views that you have. Um, because if you buy followers, they aren't, they're bots and they're not quite, they're not liking the things you have. So you could have 30,000 followers on your Instagram profile, but you're only getting 10 likes and that then they know that. Mm. So again, that, long haul getting to know yourself and getting to know your audience and bringing them in bit by bit it right there is going to help you out in in that um wanting to look like the real deal to the people around you that's that's something people have learned to start looking at now um and the second thing off of that um is that when you're sharing content i wrote down a little, a little um when you're sharing content, you don't need to worry. There, there was a there was a moment in time where we got complaints about sharing too much um, or sharing too much of the same thing because algorithms back then shared every single thing that you shared to everyone on your list. This doesn't happen anymore. Algorithms apparently now, I don't know if the statistic came out a year ago, so it's probably totally different now but only five to 10% of the people following you actually see your post when you put it out. So if you have a post that you're super stoked in, or you have a little bit of a rollout before a single comes out, do not be afraid of putting it out multiple times in a little bit of a different way, because you're, on, you're not, not everyone seeing it. Do not be afraid. You're not pestering anymore. This isn't, this isn't a thing. No one's going to come after you and say that you're trying to be a social media hog or you're pestering them and, oh, stop, you know, no. Let that one out the door and out the window because um, the algorithms are messing with it. <laughs> and, and you deserve to be able to put out that amazing little behind the scenes video putting out more photos there isn't just this one post you put out and then it ends there don't be afraid put it out multiple times um paying for sponsored posts boosts on instagram that's where this really changes and that's where they're little jerks is if you pay to boost a post then it's going to get to more of your audience maybe 50 to 70 percent of your audience um instead of the 5% because now they're making you pay to be able to get in front of everyone that you want. Um, but so they can definitely help even just putting five bucks on something I like just for a day, I've noticed but the one thing to remember with Instagram boosts is that it takes a while for the post to actually be um, um, when they, they're like verifying your ad, what's the word I'm trying to look, is that the right thing? Where you put in the ad, but then they, they take time to verify. And sometimes it's 24 hours. So you've put the photo out and your boost doesn't start until, you know, the next day or something. So if you want to boost something, have a plan with it, share it first thing in the morning and then boost it right away. So that, cause that first little bit of traction is always the best thing. And now I'm going to shut up and put it over to someone else <laughs> no we love we love you we love what you have to say actually i, I was going to say Krista. this next question is probably a you question but I, what i wanted to add mm. to what everybody's saying is like what you give is sometimes and often what you get so in terms of engagement and things like that 
um, and the buddy system and everything else. Like Emergence is a group of dozens of women who like each other's stuff and celebrate one another. We can create our own little sort of system here where you know you get your likes, you get your engagement. And what I mean by what you give is what you get and in terms of engagement is like, like someone's post and then do a little comment. And, and because when I see someone's post and I see that they have genuine, you know, sort of conversation or comments or a thank you or an emoji, you know, um, to somebody else's stuff, that's really quite special. That means that they are actually engaging. And if you do that, then you'll often, and you'll often sort of get that back um, and you'll often build that community that wants to celebrate you and like your stuff and build that sort of, um, you know, engagement as well. Engagement is the only word that I can think of right now. It's terrible. But uh, the question here that I was going to throw back to Catherine was, um, do you have any recommendations on learning basics? This is from Victoria of iPhone videos. Um, she says she has no film or photo background and needs a starting place. Yeah. Um, so Deirdre is writing in some amazing stuff here. There are, there's so many courses and quite frankly, I am a total YouTube fiend. So like if, if you, if there's a question, you have five people on YouTube have already answered it. Um, and the amazing thing is so I don't know what device everyone has right now, but like even even the iPhone 8, iPhone 7 still has like really remarkable camera on it. Um, I just upgraded to the 13 and I just f feel like I should just sell all of my cameras because now everyone has it right here. Um, so <laughs> but the lighting, like finding a window for your face. Um, and the wonderful thing is about lighting is creating these little bits of shadow. Don't don't blow your face out entirely bright from every side. Let these little shadows come in to create um, a bit more of your jawline or a bit more of your cheek line. Um, contrast is awesome in that way. Um, camera just a little bit above you is with an iPhone is a really great silhouette on your face if you're just looking up a little bit instead of like being down here. Um, investing in a little tiny uh, gorilla pod with a Joby um, iPhone clamp on the top. That is my fave. I have that thing everywhere with me. And now with so much stabilization in your phone, you can just hold that thing out in front of you and you're like on one of the one of my like two thousand dollar gimbals. Um, so yeah, Gorilla Pod, Joby, they have amazing accessories or even these Joby also has these little clamps that you can put onto the thing that's on your phone and you could clamp that thing anywhere you want in your house. You can start a cooking channel because it's over clamped next to the wall and it's staring at you. The those two companies have done a really wonderful thing for accessories and being able to learn as well how to be able to do this at home so if you couple the youtube questions with a couple tiny little pieces of things or duct tape because i use duct tape a lot um it's awesome and and i there was someone at the very beginning asking um matt and i at sandstone we're we're always here to talk about um digital marketing you can just come in for an hour and we can have a look at your social media and talk about you know what do you what do you want to create in the world what do you want to put out there and see if there's anything we can do to help you feel free to reach out in that way i wanted to make sure i mentioned that oh deirdre you rock look at this yeah i was just posting some stuff there to victoria's question about like where do you start with with cell phone videos and everything and you start really basic and you start with not not pressuring yourself to share them just yet <laughs> um so you know we all have really different orientations around camera comfort um and that's a really interesting thing to sort of explore with yourself and figure out uh, like i'm really comfortable when i'm talking on zoom i'm totally fine being on camera if I'm recording myself playing something or doing a performance, oh boy, I turn into this like stiff scarecrow. So, you know, we all have a place where something happens <laughs> um, when we are being watched. We feel we're being watched by that camera and that will come out in your videos. And the only antidote is to do it over and over and over again 
until you just don't care about it anymore. So you can't, it, it really is like desensitization therapy. Like when you have a phobia about something, you just do it and do it and do it. And you, yes, your first videos that you take of yourself will be horrible. They will be cringe. You will watch them and be like, oh, and it's fine. You don't have to share those, right? And eventually, you know, you'll go through however many times you have to cringe at yourself you will just slowly start cringing slightly less. And for some of us, that's the best place that we'll get to. <laughs> and you have to just hold your nose and, and start sharing at a certain point, right? Um, but yeah, a lot of us really, really struggle with video. There is something about video. It's very, very different from a photo. Um, oh boy, it just is. I don't know, psychologically it just is. So my best advice, I always, always, always have people in my class who are like, oh God, I really wanna record myself playing. I would love to share a practice video or I would love to share a 10 second clip of this new rep that I'm working on uh, or like this run, this fancy run that I'm really proud of but I can't play the rest of the piece yet. And it's like, great, great. Do that. You but you know, some, some musicians will just uh, literally, yeah, so some musicians compromise, like sometimes guitarists who are camera shy will just make a video of their hands on their instrument without their face. That's, you know, if that's as far as you can go, that's fine. If that is the way that allows you to actually share something, that is better than not sharing at all. Because really, this is about, again, it's about fi finding your boundaries. I will say people love faces. If you can work up to a point, especially if you're a singer, it's kind of hard to get around uh, uh, not um, videoing your face, but there are a few things you can do. You can pr obviously practicing singing in a mirror is really helpful and even recording yourself. You can have, you can, I've mentioned this before, but you can take your camera and you can actually like put a mirror behind it as well. Um, if you don't want to see yourself back at you on the phone, sometimes I find it disconcerting to see my video as my video is being recorded. It's weird, but a mirror I have no problem with. And the other thing you can do is if you're using a real camera, I know nobody does anymore, but if you do occasionally use a real camera, you can put a piece of tape over the red recording light that turns on when you hit the record button and just pretend that it's not recording. Just pretend that the camera is just there, but it's not on, but it actually is on. And some sometimes that's where you get the best takes is where you can just trick yourself that you're just being normal. You're just being normal in your space and you're doing what you would do when you're singing or do or playing by yourself when you feel like nobody's watching or listening. I know for me, like I still struggle with like, ah, I don't want to be heard until it's perfect. And of course it's never perfect. So we do have to, um, we have to desensitize ourselves in this really like safe, consistent, small steps often kind of way. I have some acting tips for self tapes that may, may or may not, you know what I mean? Uh, help. I don't know. Um, every time I get a self tape request, it's like, please landscape this, that, but I mean, it's not always landscape anymore. Actually, it seems to be orienting a lot more because of reels and things to your regular up and down. I don't know what, what's, what's the what, vertical. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, what's the word for that? Um, but having the light shine on you as opposed to behind you is going to be a, a much nicer sort of uh, result. Great. But natural light is really beautiful. And so if you have a window, um, don't film yourself you know, um, toward the window, film yourself, like as with the window in front of you. And I'll, sh I'll, I'll sort of show you, I have a curtain in front of me right now, but if I didn't, it sort of blows me right out. Right. So if you can kind of filter yourself a little bit with even just a curtain, it's like, I have direct sunlight on my face right now. And that's just a little too much, but there's some really easy little things like going behind the curtain, um, which will sort of neutralize your, your, now I can't set myself back up again, <laughs> which will neutralize your light, you know, or even sometimes in certain apps, like the light is going to help you, but like, just take your camera and like, go like this. And until you find the exact right light that looks nice, 
then that's the one, you know what I mean? Little, little things like that can really help. Also neutral backgrounds are your best friend. Um, I mean, none of us are using a neutral background right now and it still looks great, but if you want to make a nice video that sort of looks just a hair more polished, um, casting directors, like they absolutely despise anything that's not a neutral background. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's kind of nice to be able to have, you know, even set yourself up, make a little set, you know, have fun with it, right? Like put a plant here, put a lamp here so that your, your background is balanced and make sure the light is in the right way. And then hit record. Crystal, can I add one thing in there? Yes. Yes. Clean your camera. We hold it up against our face all day and that gets so gross. Take like a cleaning, cl yeah, I can, you can always tell when someone puts it up and you get like that 70s Vaseline look. Um, <laughs> <laughs> clean that selfie camera or the back one. Yeah, that's, I'm gonna just put that one in there. I love I the diffuse curtain, you rock. Yeah. <laughs> I have a really funny little tiny snippet. Somebody thought their camera was totally broken um, yesterday and um, somebody else just said, have you cleaned it yet? And so they cleaned it. This person thought they needed a brand new phone. All they needed to do was wipe their camera. <laughs> I thought it was the greatest thing ever. Anyways, um, it looks like it's 11.02 and we are nearly done. So uh, if anybody has any final sort of comments or questions or something we didn't quite get to answer, I mean, I'm sure we can spare the extra few minutes to clear anything up. But of course, the conversation always continues on our WhatsApp um, and, and social media. So please, let's all engage. Let's all follow each other, shall we? You know, let's all like it and 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 um and make sure that we are engaging with each other's content and and be our own tribe. So that if we got, let me see how many people are in this. There are seventeen participants here. If we all seventeen liked each other's likes and liked each other's stuff, that means you have sixteen instant likes, sixteen instant comments, sixteen more replies, which means you have thirty-two comments. That looks amazing on any post you know yeah and, like and challenge for the next week let's all like each other <laughs> and then we never have to speak again no just kidding true. Let's, yeah. uh, it's hard to keep it up i find it hard to to do that but um yeah let's dump your profiles whatever accounts you have in the chat let's have a follow frenzy um that's part of what emergence is is just making this mutual support community and yeah we can support each other on, on social media when we see somebody like really really trying and putting themselves out there let's let's give each other a like let's give each other some engagement wherever we can can i make um, one little so jack's jack's iphone made a really good comment and i have the quickest little tidbit around hashtags um hashtags are brilliant um when used really cur curly what <laughs> correctly I'm gonna have coffee after this. Um, they, uh, the main thing about hashtags is when you type them in an Instagram, you'll see that there's a number that comes up underneath them, which means how many people have used that hashtag in their post. If you find a hashtag that has like less than 10,000, less than 15,000 people having used it, there's not a great chance that someone is gonna see that hashtag. The other way around, if you're going to use a hashtag that has anything over 200, 300,000 uses, you're going to get buried in that hash. No one's going to see it. You're going to get buried in the thread. If there's millions of people using that hashtag, like you can to look cool, but it's not going to help you out. If you find something in that lovely little tickle trunk of like 20,000 uh, people using that hashtag, 20, 200,000, 20,000 to 200,000 in that little in between bit, there's more likelihood that you're going to show up on someone's feed when they search for something. That's my hashtag thing. There we go. And yes, I love this follow thing. I'm going to put mine down there. I'm following everyone as we speak. So sorry for being. I am busy. too. We're, yeah. going all, we're going quiet because we're, we're focusing on this now. Exactly. want to make it happen. So in More connections this is this is organic this is organic followers right here this beautiful. is the very definition building community connecting with real people and following exactly. each other it's slower it's harder but it is of more value and higher quality yes exactly exactly so i don't know as, as a closing statement for me i just want to say like that authenticity is 
all to me you can feel it you can you can totally sense somebody's authenticity when you are seeing their social media represent yourself how you want to be represented there are a bazillion tools how to do it and honestly unless you have the time to make it your job do what you can yes there are algorithms yes there are lots of different sort of rules and things but like just make it your own and the more that you can make it your own and naturally um, you know, formulate it into your rhythm, I think the better and the longer, you know, you, you'll be able to keep it up because if you just like go hard for two weeks and then you're like, okay, I'm exhausted. That's probably not really going to serve you in the end either. Um, and so, yeah, but, uh, we'll definitely try and send out the WhatsApp link so that everyone can, um, join the WhatsApp chat as well. I always find that's a really wonderful resource. Just if anybody has rando questions that you just are like, hey, you know what, how do I do this for this? I always find that there's always a few answers and always a few resources on that um, format. And in the meantime, I'm gonna continue following you all. It's gonna be a very boring end to our session because we're all following you. Well, <laughs> yeah, I know. Let's talk about when is our next session and what is our next topic? Cause we've got another one coming up in next month. Survival in the music business is uh, yes. by learning many skills and wearing many hats. Correct. Whether yes. acting, producing, composing or any other aspect of the business, each can provide both a wage and a career boost when you are not on stage. Learn how to make it all work in the next session. It's Ooh. Crystal Darcy and Christina Lau as the guest. Fantastic. Um, Christina's really, um, she's, a, she's, she's a really great resource in the industry. So um, it'll be a great session and it'll be a classic two hour, um, our usual. So it'll be great. Hope you yeah, can so all, in, all join us. Yeah, and for anyone who hasn't attended one of our classic two hour sessions before, the first hour is rather like what we did today. But the second hour, we actually go into breakout rooms um, and you sign up for which of the three mentors you want to go into their breakout room and get a little bit more sort of individual attention, have a conversation in a small group with them. So we just give a little bit more focused attention in that type of format, whereas our one hours are kind of like just the mentors doing this like lightning round uh, Q&A. Um, yeah, so that's yeah. that's what to expect next month. And you can sign up. It's always free um to sign up for our zooms on our website yeah thank you for having me ladies thank you so much catherine this thank you awesome. catherine for and thank you awesome all to for be here questions yeah, mm, yeah. Thank so you. great to talk to you guys there yeah. will be a replay um hug sings is asking yes so this will the recording of the zoom will be uploaded to youtube and will live there permanently um so just check our the emergent social media emergence pieces Check that because we'll always post um, as soon as our replay is up on YouTube. For some closing remarks, thank you so much to uh, all the mentors and all of you uh, for joining today. Um, once again, our sponsors, and uh, this would have brought to you by Creative BC, Province of British Columbia, City of Vancouver, and Red Chamber Cultural Society. And uh, just a reminder, if anyone wants a portion not to be in future videos from this recording, please email emergencebc at gmail.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you in May. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy Take the rest care, of the everybody. Weekend.